Here I have the seat, the stretchers, and all three of the legs ready to assemble the perch. I also have a magazine to help prevent marring and my glue pot ready to go. First though I'm going to need to split some wedges. I use the cutoffs from my turnings for this so I have nice straight grain hard maple. I even keep it in my kiln and then I just pull one of the blocks out and split them up and I use this handy little jig to shave them down and we'll do a nice even taper. These are really solid wedges. They don't tend to break when you, when you drive them home like sawn wedges do. You want a nice even taper and smooth sides all around. I'm going to go ahead and assemble the stretchers first. I'll put the glue in the mortise first, spread it around. Nice thin even coat is what I'm always going for. Same thing here on the tenon, including the end grain. And then I'll orient the grain so it's exactly how I want it. Find my hammer and then drive it home. I drive it right to the tenon line that I made when I was turning. There's a score mark. And now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. Careful to dab off as much water from that brush as I can. I don't want to flood the joint with water. And I just want to remove all the glue that I can immediately. I'm going to go ahead and put the front leg together with the stretcher assembly. It's important to move fast with this hot glue. You can see that I'm not wearing my normal flannel shirt. I've heated the shop up to about 60 degrees. Here you'll see that I put the end of the leg up against my hip so that if I need to make any slight adjustments while driving this home with the dead blow mallet, I can. It's very difficult just to torque it into position unless you're actually tapping it while you're torquing. And once again, a little clean up. I clean up each joint as I go. You can see now the front leg goes in, the stretcher assembly is already attached to it, and I just have to attach these two rear legs. So once again, glue into the mortise first, and then onto the tenon. It's real important to keep order so that you know that you're putting the correct leg on the correct tenon there. And I can put this in just a little bit, maybe, a, maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch. It's about as far as I can put it in by hand. I'm going to spread them to make sure that they're the right distance apart for me to drive this home. And you can see how handy this magazine is to keep that surface from marring when I drive it home with the hammer. And they just drop in. Time for the final leg. And you'll notice that when I'm driving this one home, I use the dead blow mallet so that I don't mar the surface. Get it in position sure everything is right with the alignment. I didn't have the clip of me driving that home, but I think you get the idea. I'll clean that up. Now it's time to see if everything slides in where it should. I flip the piece over, give it a quick wrap to set those joints, and I'm going to mark to saw the kerfs for the wedges. I always mark these so that I'm going to have my wedges perpendicular to the long fibers of the seat, otherwise you risk splitting your seat. Once again that magazine comes in handy. I'm just going to take my Japanese saw and saw right down the line there. I'll leave about a half an inch at the bottom before the score mark. No need to saw all the way to the bottom of that tenon. A light grip on the Japanese saw is the key. The tighter you hold it, the more vibration you're going to transmit into the actual workpiece. I'm going to shave these wedges down now so that they're just a hair bigger than the top side of these holes. That way they'll key in just a little bit, but not make a mess of it. And now I'm going to put the glue into these mortises. And even though I've heated the shop up, you'll see I'm going to move with some haste. But I'm going to make sure I get a nice thin even coat on all the surfaces first. You can also see those two flats that we left while carving the seat are helping me out here again. I've got uh, the plywood beneath the seat. And you'll see why that comes in handy because these tenons drive all the way through as you put them in. If I didn't have the seat blocked up, they would hit the bench top. And they slide in there. 
and I'll use my mallet to drive them home. Remember, these are wedge-shaped tenons. They can split the seat. So just knock them until you hear that dead sound. And time to drive those wedges. Because this is a three-legged stool, I know that each of these legs is grounded nicely on the floor. If it was a four-legged piece, I would be holding it by that leg and making sure that that force was driving directly down the leg. You don't want to drive these legs back out with the wedges. And I clean up the bottoms. I don't bother with the tops because I know I'll be cutting those off and scraping the seat anyway. Just clean up the bottom of the seat. And here's our assembled perch.